audience. In this lecture, audience awareness, the academic audience, setting the tone. In any textual communication, there are three primary components, the message, the one giving the message, and the one or more receiving the message. As the one preparing the text, you must be certain of what message you want to share in your text. If you don't know what you want to say, it won't matter how much time or effort you put into the writing or how well you know the audience. Once you've clearly defined the message, you'll have to decide how to prepare the message so it can be understood. This is when it's necessary to seriously consider the audience. It's only when the message is tailored to the needs of the audience that it can be understood in the way you intend. For instance, let's say you have a set of task instructions. Wouldn't you prepare those instructions differently if the audience was a group of six-year-olds than you would if it was a group of adults? The academic audience is unique. Consider its expectations in comparison with some other large audiences. The broadcast audience, TV, radio, and partly the internet, tends to want information as quickly as possible, and it's willing to accept inaccurate information and sometimes even gossip for the sake of speed. The mass market print audience, newspaper and magazine readers, tends to prefer information that has had a somewhat greater measure of scrutiny. Information prepared for these media has the advantage of at least a few hours of cogitation that allows amendment of the message based on subsequent knowledge. The academic audience, on the other hand, values fact-based information and expects a writer to engage with the ideas of others who have written on the same subject. It expects a process of observation, testing, discovery, review, and correction as needed when discovery outpaces the current perspective. As students, you come into academia with values, opinions, and ideas, some of which are stunningly strong. But many of the ideas are not based on factual evidence. They are a compilation of views and values developed through personal experience and exposure to the ideas around us. When writing for an academic audience, you must go beyond that insular knowledge base to discover and evaluate the ideas and evidence within the larger conversation before you can either adjust your own thinking or refute the thinking of those who have been engaged in the discussion for a longer period of time. We can see evidence of this in professional journals, books, and some especially high-quality websites in the way they acknowledge the contributions of others and show how they use evidence to either support or refute or build upon those contributions. Academic writing is usually assigned as a way of demonstrating learning or skill proficiency. It's more formal than most types of writing you will do and is often judged in some way. At university level, the messages tend to have a measure of gravity that comes partly from the expectation that factual evidence will be used to develop and support the ideas expressed. Academic writing is not the place for casual use of text messaging or email conventions, nor is it the place for stilted, pompous phrasing. It's appropriate to use I when referring to yourself and your ideas, but it's also appropriate to refer to other authors by their full or last names, not by their first names.